Hey guys, welcome to the Happy Weekenders. This is Jess. I'm Jess. I'm Mike. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about a few things uh, that we've learned along our way here in our first year of uh, our travel trailer. We wanted to give you 10 tips that we've found for new owners uh, before you take your first trip. Welcome to our campground for the evening. We are in... Uh, Florence, Oregon. Florence, Oregon. At We have to remember how to pronounce the lake's name. Wonick? Wohink. Wohink Wo Lake. Wohink Lake. RV Resort. It's a nice little place. Yeah. We're getting used to the RV Resort camping. I would not call this a resort, but it is a nice place. They have a pool table. They do have a pool table. They have private access to the lake. Yeah, there's a lake right across the, the, the street. Uh, highway 101 mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, the ocean is two miles that way that way right behind us it's all the sand dunes so we have ATVs going crazy behind us but yeah but in a world that you just bought a travel trailer uh, I think we've had enough hiccups to know we've had some good ones what not to do so things that we want to give you advice on that you uh, will want it well listen I listen to a lot of people and I still did it anyway but hopefully we can help you not make as many mistakes uh is well we, we didn't do too bad but uh there's only one really bad one oh that we got lucky with that wasn't our fault though that wasn't our fault though so here's some here's 10 tips for you before you take your first trip do these things or learn these things number one you have bought your travel trailer you've never taken a trip do a shakedown drive a shakedown drive is you hook it up and you just drive around I mean as far as you can go that you're comfortable with go for I think I went for 150 miles or something like that this is to one find any problems with the trailer that you've just bought you know literally you're shaking it down you're trying to get it down the highway take it down you know freeways you're gonna get used to towing it you're gonna find any problems with it which is the problem that she was mentioning ours didn't actually show up in our shakedown drive it showed up on our first trip showed up on our first trip <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, but this is really important because you're going to learn a lot about your vehicle or your trailer. You're going to, you know, you've never towed anything that big before. Do a shakedown drive. It's going to be really important. Um, I went by myself. I wish I, I didn't. I wish Jess was with me because I think she would have heard things because she gets a little freaked out when noises happen. But we honestly, we didn't find anything in our particular situation, but I know people that have. Uh, this is a very important thing to do. It also helps if you have a lot of your dishes and cookware and everything already in your trailer when you do that because then you're also going to see how things shift around as you're driving because everything moves don't put the breakable stuff in don't Not put the yet. breakable stuff in yet but the non-breakable plates right like that kind of stuff so that you can see like do you need to move it to a different cupboard does it need more protection like whatever it is yeah yeah uh, that's absolutely correct um the, the one of the other things too is you learn to to do things with the trailer you know at home and you're parking in the driveway you know i mean hook it up to your your rig a, a couple of times just to get used to it and figure out how to do it uh and once you've done that make a checklist we kind of break up our sections of i do a lot of the stuff on the outside but and she does the stuff on the inside as we're setting up camp um, but on the outside, like she's responsible for hooking up the water while I'm hooking up the sewer and I'm trying to, you know, we, I, I do the leveling, she's hooking up water, you know, we, we've got our steps that we do. Find what works best for you if you're by yourself, you know, what order you want to do them in. If, you know, you're, you're a family group, you know, everybody gets a role. Just kind of break it up what's best for you and your rig. All rigs are going to be a little bit different, so you're going to know about your rig more than I can tell you about, obviously. But Yeah. Yeah, and that works really well, too, because it could turn something that could have like it could take an hour or so to do like into 30 minutes like I think we've gotten it down when we got here Friday night I think it took us I don't know, 15 minutes yeah maybe 20 but that's because we haven't gone out in a little bit and we are rusty <laughs> we were a little rusty on like what needs to go in what order but 
as long as you have that list, it's really easy to remember. Like, it oh, now I have to do this, and now I have to do this. I genuinely, I think the first time we ever set up was over an hour. Um, you know, and for now, sure over and, an hour. And if we got pressed, we could do it in ten to fifteen minutes now. Yeah. So, you know, that first couple of times you're gonna fumble around, but if, if you get that checklist, it's just gonna help you out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just the more times you do it, the easier it's gonna be. It's mm -hmm. gonna just be natural. Uh. The other, uh, number two, or number three, I guess, um, this is probably one of the most vital things, I would say. Uh, she has yet to f conquer this one, but learn to back up. You know, you're in a new RV or a travel trailer, and especially, you know, if you're in a really long travel trailer or, or whatnot, learn how to back that thing up. If you are not familiar with backing up trailers, uh, this is going to be crucial for you. Single axle and tandem axle and these big, huge toy hauler, triple axle guys are all going to maneuver differently. Um, we are in a tandem axle, uh, but we're in a short, uh, shorter trailer for a tandem axle. So ours maneuvers, you know, differently than somebody who's, you know, in those 40 foot behemoths. Um, take it out to an empty parking lot, find some you know parking spots and then try to maneuver it around now one of the other kickers to it is understand even when you're pulling forward the the back end of the trailer is going to swing around on you so if you're close to like a gas pump or something like that and you pull forward and you turn away that back end of that trailer is going to swing in towards the gas pump even if you're pulling when you're when you're pulling away from it so know where the trailer will swing this is something uh, i highly recommend um Jess is a little uncomfortable backing up the trailer right now, especially at home. Our driveway is in a really tight corner and it goes in a very steep uphill really quick. So that's all, that's, that's all on me right now. But, you know, and the reason I say learn this and get comfortable with it before you go out is these RV spots and some of these parks are tight. Yeah. We are lucky. This one that we're in is kind of on a corner, and looking at it could have been intimidating, but Mike's a trained professional, so he had it first try. Um, but we have been at a few RV parks where it is tight, and if there were, two, if you had people on either side of you, it would have been really interesting to try to get yourself in there, because some of these places, they just pack you in, like... Oh, right on top of each other. Some of them are like sardines. Other ones, I mean, they, you, you got tons of space. You wouldn't even know their neighbors there. This one's nice enough. They attempt to hide your neighbors. We have hedges or something between the yeah, spots. Yeah, they've landscaped so that there are um, privacy walls, except for I think we're in the one spot where the privacy walls end halfway. Yeah, we don't have. So we don't have all the privacy. We have a but... really nice view of our neighbor's dog this weekend. That's She's true. real cute. She's a cute dog. Yeah. Not very yappy, unless you say something to her. For whatever reason, she doesn't like me. Um, but yeah, backing up, <laughs> huge, huge deal. Uh, so, you know, go to the mall or empty lot somewhere and just play with it for a while. Because I think if you get into some of these spots and it's real tight, it's going to get real frustrating for you. And when you get frustrated, you're going to rush things. And that's just where problems happen. Yeah. And on that note, too, ladies... I know I am not a good example of this right now, but um, if something happens, You're gonna go you want to be able to make sure that you can hook up the trailer yourself. That you, that got you can, I, which I can do, but um, that you can hook up the trailer yourself, that you can take everything down, that you could get out of the park and get home. Because if something happened, and your husband or your partner or whatever was unable to do any of that, like if they got hurt or injured or had to leave for an emergency, you want to make sure that you can do that yourself. And like I told Mike, like, I could do it, no problem. I could tow the trailer home, but getting it into the driveway would be a whole other story. It'll wait for whatever emergency I have <laughs> It would be... We'll get home from. Yeah, yeah no, like it, I said, like, we can get in the, tra in the driveway. It's going to be the only thing in the driveway forward she's got down <laughs> hooking it up she's got down uh we're just working on the backup and that's just a that's a confidence thing so yeah. uh again just take it out and get comfortable i think it's one of the more crucial things because a lot of these a lot of these spots they, they they say they have pull throughs and a lot of them do i mean the one place we're in now has probably 50 60 pull throughs um, but they're mostly reserved for the big rvs like the right, big the big motor guys. coach 
RVs that are that really can't back up into these smaller spaces mm -hmm. or detach. So because we're um, on the shorter side, we're always going to be put in a position of cramped spaces, I guess. Yeah, yeah. and this park that we're in tonight also has um, because we're right across from the or right butting up against the sand dunes. I think we're one of like three sites that don't have about four ATVs in there. So oh, because we we're so so we, don't, we don't we didn't have ATVs, so we, we don't have ATVs. Spot. Yeah, so we get a smaller spot where like some of these spots here are really big, but you can see why when you're walking around the camp because oh they got forty four yeah. foot toy haulers with with two, two decks. <laughs> Did you know that was a thing? <laughs> two you can have two decks. Yeah, they got two in a toy hauler. Two two decks. Totally rethought my whole thought process of getting a toy hauler. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I can have two decks? Like, you can have one deck and I can have my own? Like, yeah. sold. We're golden. Side by sides, ATVs, yeah. quads, every of every kind stacked around these things. And it's all in one side. It's amazing. It's these pretty huge, great. huge, you know, F-450 dually things with, I, I mean. I feel like we should have made more friends this weekend. I feel like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we felt, we, I don't think we've ever felt so small. Uh, no. <laughs> we're not in a very, we're not in the world's smallest trailer by any stretch, but I think this weekend. We, we're, we're, yeah. we're feeling a little small. Yeah. Um, so, um, it, it, with all of this, it, I guess four, I think is what we're on here. Um, get familiar with your trailer before you go. Camp in your driveway if you need to. I mean, one of our things that we've had to learn is uh, our propane to get the hot water heater to, to go is you got to prime the the propane back so like i've got to turn the stove burners on it just to kind of suck the propane backwards is to get the fridge and the water heater to, to go and hey if i'm on crack or crazy on that one and that's not a thing well, prove me wrong because that's the only way it works i'm telling you <laughs> that thing will default every time unless okay. we uh prime it back now also doing that um we have our camp chef outside, you know, so I'll, I'll turn that on to kind of prime this everything backwards as well And we couldn't get that going until we we look lit the stuff inside up front So yeah. I mean we're still we're at the point where things. we're like why is it? Oh, right because we didn't do this thing. We didn't do this the yeah. other thing what we did um, Because we got our trailer in December, so we couldn't take her out for a really long time um, We so could we chose not we to. chose not to so because camped, she was winterized. That's why we camped mostly well we also we would just go hang out in her for like an evening like we would take a bottle of wine and just go sit in the trailer and plan trips and do all that and that's another thing that just we to get learned familiar with it yeah was how by doing that was how long our batteries lasted oh so if you're not on electrical and if you're not like like if you're not if you're just gonna boondock like you want to know how much your ba how long your batteries are gonna last great point. and great yeah absolutely. i think we had like eight hours of charge but we had her like the heat going the lights on the radio playing full tilt full tilt for like eight the hours first eight our batteries hours. are dead in eight hours so yeah. we are looking at new battery situations yeah just so you know right. but i mean you know how to cook in it where <laughs> things go you know how you move around in it how you set it up what you're comfortable with what you're not comfortable with i, I mean it, I think we learned a lot in that first month or two of not being able to use well i mean we could have used her but we just we chose not to we weren't 100 percent ready and we bought it on a, we bought it earlier than we thought we only bought it because the deal they offered us of course at the end of the year if you want to buy we're going to do a video i think later on about tips of buying one but we bought ours at almost uh, i think a week before the year end when they were trying to get rid of every you know previous year's models and we got a heck of a deal the like they couldn't I was going to say no. I thought I was going to offer a low ball thing. And they came back to me and said, what if I sell it to you this? And it was like three grand less than I was going to offer. And I went, I don't, I don't know how to respond right now. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but yeah, absolutely get familiar with your trailer, your RV. Um, I think that's just imperative. Uh, cause you're going to get out there and again, you're going to get frustrated. You're not going to know where things are at, you know, learn where your sewer lines are at, learn where your, learn where your gray water lines are at. I mean, just learn where everything is on it. So yeah. when you're out there, you're not surprised. Um, now when you're in a campsite, I mean, everybody's friendly. You're going to meet your neighbors and everybody will help you, but you know, you don't always want to look like a like rookie. Like you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, 
Well, it, it once you get to the, to camp in your first thing though, I, I I've learned I think we don't unhook the trailer from our tow rig um, until everything's one hundred percent good. Um, first thing we do is chalk the wheels, <laughs> and then <laughs> we, and then we work on getting everything else unhooked. <laughs> Well, the, the other thing too is we don't unhook because our slide out is six feet long. It goes out the back. Like this is our slide out behind us. This slide out, that's our, our bed. That's our bed. It slides six feet back in and covers the dinette and the couch over here and <clears throat> all that good stuff. Um, so, you know, we don't unhook it until you're done because that sewer line might not reach. Your electric line may not reach. Your um, the slide out may hit a tree and you got to pull further forward. You know, I mean, for whatever reason don't unhook until everything around your trailer outside is set up not worry about the inside the inside is your own personal issues of what you got going on but, but make sure everything reaches make sure everything reaches and your slide outs all pop out i mean uh, so our slide out goes out the back our, our friends all go out the side we're the yeah. odd, we're the odd ducks in the in the in the world but uh I, most Trailers Most trailers go out the side. We just got I've seen a special like they, one. They, I see, you know, they pull up and they're too close to a tree and they got to realign or, or, or whatnot. Yeah. So don't unhook the, the trailer until your outside stuff's all hooked up. Or at least until you know you can get everything hooked up. Right. Like yeah, if, you, know, if you just want to do like a dry run of like plug everything in and make sure that it gets to where it needs to go. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this is our checklist of our video we're checklist people like you have to be checked i like lists lists are my favorite thing um, <laughs> but uh, i mean we got checklists for everything i mean this thing is just checklist after checklist so we practice what we preach uh, but, uh so number number oh, i don't even know where we're at now seven i guess or i don't know five we lost track we lost track now because i've actually got scribble notes of changing things on here um but uh next one would be don't don't rush your trip like don't try to do anything speedy i think that's just going to be leading to a disaster as well don't, I think the first don't trip... Don't rush and don't be rushed. Yeah, the first trip that we took, we the big trip we took with our trailer was we went, act, we went up to Washington mm. to see my family. And I know that it's normally a six-hour drive, six, seven hours. We allotted eight hours for us to get there just in case, like stopping. Um, yeah. When our trailer has a... Uh, off-road kit so it actually stands taller than most trailers it was about six inches taller than most trailers which was really fun going down the columbia gorge right. yeah, <laughs> to I get to but um just don't be in a hurry like even with this trip tonight or this weekend like florence is typically an hour 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 it's and a half it's an hour drive an hour drive from where we live and so we, we didn't go far this trip no we allotted almost two hours before we got here, like to actually get here and I think you know we also thought traffic and everything like that because it is like a two-way or two-lane kind of highway right. through the mountains um but we actually made really good time like it's almost like when you set yourself up to take longer you're just pleasantly surprised when you get there and it's hasn't yeah, taken just, as long as you right, thought it would you're in the right mental state i mean if you're trying yeah. to rush things or you're being rushed and somebody else is rushing you i think you're just again you're just gonna be flustered and being flustered with five ten thousand pounds behind your rig is just a bad idea yeah. uh, also just part of that too is just planning ahead like i think when we decide we're going to go somewhere um or when we decide we're going to go on a trip it's like the weekend before we're actually going is when we start packing and we've gotten to a point now with the trailer where everything is pretty much in here. Like all we need to do is pack our clothes and put some food in the fridge, which is amazing. But also right. it takes us a week to realize that's where we're at <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, we, we, we've now almost, I mean, all the things in here are all permanent trailer things, which was, was our goal for this first year was to, you know, not have to pack everything every time. So I think this time, I think we looked at everything about 55 times, realizing, no, nope, everything is already right. here. We just need to pack the beer and the clothes. Yeah. And the food. Oh, and the food. We needed the food. 
food's really important. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, in, on, even on that, we have a checklist. I have a checklist on the wall right now. We actually have a video kind of being shot that we're doing right now. The things that we uh, meal plan and, and bring with us, you know, ahead of time. So, yeah. uh, I mean, I don't, mean, we're you don't kind be of, extreme like us on the we're checklist. We're a little but. organizational nerds. Like, I'm sure at some point there's going to be a binder that's going to come out. We're going to have, like... We'll recipes that we eat or that we're gonna use because we do tend to like reuse food ideas absolutely because it's the easiest thing to do absolutely especially when you're a weekend warrior like we are I mean I work nine to five nine to six um, I do not. Monday through Friday Mike is usually on the road so there's a lot of times that we're coming out where he's getting off a plane either Thursday night or Friday and we're taking off the next day and so we have to make sure that everything is put together so that literally all we have to do is just hook the trailer up and go and that's kind of what happened with this one luckily he was home for a couple days before so he was able to like pack up and and do all that but yeah this trip we tried some new things we went crabbing that was well, we weren't good, but we're not good. <laughs> you always got to try new stuff. <laughs> so, you no, know, there are things that I'm in charge of and things that Mike is in charge of. The one thing that we both do is to make sure that everything in the trailer is secure before we take off. Mm. So, we both kind of check on everything. Uh, one of the things that we do have that we got. Um, I think we just picked it up at Fred Meyer, but you can get them on Amazon, you can get them anywhere. We'll put a link for them in our, um, down below yeah. for Amazon, but these just kind of squeeze into your cupboards and make sure that anything behind it <laughs> isn't going to move forward. Uh, so we have one of these for like where we have our plates and coffee maker and things like that. And then um, we tried one for where we keep our food, but that cupboard is so small and nothing really moves around. We also have a collection of cast iron pots that live, um, pots and pans that live in the trailer. So we make sure that those are in the right spots. And um, luckily we have two bunk beds. We call our, our crawl in closets. Yeah. <laughs> because the kids haven't come with us on a trip yet. So um, they're really just more like storage spaces, but those are great for making sure that we have everything like put away and that it's not going to move the kids are adults and yeah i know i look very very young and i understand that and i thank you ahead of time but, uh you know the, the oldest child is 20. she's new 20. she's she's planning her 21st birthday yeah she wants dad to take her to vegas i don't want to talk about this whole other topic but that's a whole nother video the kids the, this so the, the bunk beds are in case the kids actually do ever come um, or in case some friends need a place to sleep but we do have friends who are tent campers who I felt like we bought this because of a rain situation that our tent failed in and we said well, we're done. That's the whole beginning of us buying this. Uh, plus some of our friends already had some and we, were, we realized that it was cool. It was time. It was time. It was time. But uh, yeah, so our bunk beds are known as our crawl-in closets and it works out really well. It was supposed to be in his and hers, top and bottom, and it just it's turned into a hodgepodge of just stuff. So I almost feel like, I mean, we're, we're almost to the point now we almost have to clean them out. We've we've gone a little gung-ho. Yeah, I don't really know what's back there anymore. But you got to make sure it's secure. The whole point of that is make sure yeah. all your stuff is secure. Because <laughs> we, uh, you know, I don't think we carry anything breakable, but we have things that are big and heavy sometimes. And if those things slide like a cast iron pot, I mean, that can do... Major damage. Some damage, for sure. Yeah, I think we keep all of the, I mean, we stock the fridge before we leave. Because um, we aren't really taking it on very long trips in the like that where everything's going to be unhooked for a long period of time um but i think we keep all of our liquids and your beer your precious beer mm. in the car or that all comes whiskey. in the car with us so yeah i mean that's a that's a must i mean that's what's in the cup okay cheers um if you want a recommendation of good beer <laughs> here you go this is a hot valley it's a eugene oregon thing Macho Libre. They're a mile away from our house. How do you say no to that? And they have those on sale for $3. 22 ounce IPA. He, he came home with 10 of them. Four, but well, it's fine. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're doing these trips, so um, I think this is actually number seven, if I can count, which maybe I can't. Um, plan your route. 
know your gas, uh, you know, where gas stations are and know the height of your trailer. I know that sounds weird, but I'm telling you, there are some places uh, that height becomes a major issue, uh, especially we aren't even that big of a trailer, but our trailer, again, like we talked about, is tall. Um, there's bridges and things like that and some old, you know, highways we couldn't get under. Uh, there is out there, and we haven't bought one yet. Uh, we're looking into it potentially in the future. There's a Ooh, the Garmin GPS. The Garmin. There's a Garmin GPS specifically for RVs mm -hmm. that you actually put in your heights, and it'll tell you where you can and can't go. Now around us, we don't have too much of that, but we've. I, I know um, going up about an hour and a half north of our house, trying to go to a, a buddy's house, I can't go to his house directly. I have to go around by an hour to come back down on top of the hill. To, to get to his house due to a train track that's really, really shallow. Um, plan So with planning the route, uh, know, uh, and I specifically say know where the gas stations are for one of our big trips. We did that eight hour drive that she was talking about up to, to, uh, Washington. Up to Washington State to, to see her family. And we didn't know the gas mileage that we would get. Like, cause on my shakedown, again, part of that shakedown thing, learn what kind of gas mileage you're going to get. Cause towing that rig is going to take a lot more gas mileage yeah. away than you think. And um, my rig doesn't necessarily get great gas mileage to begin with. I mean, I'm sitting at 13 miles a gallon. We got, you know, on my shakedown drive, I was sitting at about seven and a half, which was a little disappointing, but I guess, I mean, it's realistic. Um, but uh, we got up in uh, the Columbia Gorge in 30 mile an hour headwinds with this thing sitting as tall as it was. I mean, we had a sail behind us and we got down to four miles to the gallon. It was. We uh, did not plan to know where gas stations were that frequently. Uh, I mean, we went. I think we got lucky at one point where we just had to make a decision. We were at a, a point where we were like, okay, there's this tiny little gas station here or there's another gas station in 40 miles and we didn't know yeah i mean we went 150 how, miles yeah i mean it was like we're just gonna stop here it was and 150 miles to a tank is what we hit on that one or something like that it was unbelievably horrible it was bad uh i mean a honda civic would have struggled in that <laughs> and we were just huge and and that's just something that you're gonna learn like as you go out you're gonna learn like what your gas mileage is what you are what you can expect um kind of like what you're gonna expect when you go anywhere that's gonna have wind right. or any kind of conditions that's not something that like you I mean you could watch a million youtube videos on that but that's just something that is just pure experience this is us telling you to look out for those things because yeah, no just... one told us to look out for that at all and i think we did a lot of research when we were doing you know our first trips and we were buying and, I, and that was never even mentioned in anything we ever saw of, no. hey you might want to pay attention to your gas mileage and uh it it shocked us um because we had budgeted, you know, financially or in, in gas uh, stops. We, I mean, we planned, hey, we'll do a gas stop here, we'll do a gas stop here, based on some basic well, knowledge just, that we had. But yeah, like the fact that I, d I had done this drive hundreds of times to go home because this was a family event that happens every year. And so... We were nowhere having, near right. We were nowhere near right. I mean, we were stopped, like, I've done, I did that drive six months previous, and we were stopping in places that I, I had no idea existed. So. Quite literally, because of that trip, we're looking at a different tow rig in the future. Yeah. Um, we're, we're, not that our, again, not that our trailer is big, but if we're going to go long distances, I think we're going to, we might end up going to the diesel route. Um, so, um, all, so one of the things that happened on that trip that she was talking about earlier, um, the bad thing that the happened. The big bad thing that happened. Thing was um, our brake, our power brake lines to, on the trailer uh, were rubbing against the, t the trailer tires the entire trip. And I was driving and the, the brake control box started throwing codes at me while we were driving and we couldn't understand why. And we got to a gas station we, we never saw anything. We couldn't figure it out. We didn't know what was going on. I'm like, ah, we got a faulty thing. Something. Because the brakes were working. The trailer brakes were working. We, did, we didn't, you know, we were 80% of the way there. We'll just, we'll figure it out when we're there. 
and we got there and realized that the wires were rubbing against the tire for 400 500 miles 400 or whatever miles, yeah and it was uh we we were about to we we actually at that point had lost our brakes and we didn't even we we didn't realize it until we were getting onto the family property and uh the the family was there and we I had i think my cousins found it before we did only because they were checking out the trailer and looking at everything and yep. they're all mechanics and so of course they're going to look at the tires and how they, everything they is were on that together. side and, and found it in the and then the anyway we were at their shop and they had all the tools and everything to fix it we were fixed within five ten minutes it was a simple fix we just needed to fix the you know we needed to cut the lines splice them back together cinch them up away from the tires uh you know we're talking 55 cents in parts honestly but we didn't have any tools with us you know, the only tool we had with us was a dewalt drill for our uh, stabilizer jacks and our uh x chop yeah luckily we were at mike and we were at my farm my family farm and so and like you said we were right at the shop that's where we set up and i mean between the three or four cousins that were there they literally had that fixed before i think mike even got a chance to look at it they were just like oh we're fixing it so so i mean it was a, it was a problem in catastrophe that could have been but it was it was really a thing but the point of this is pack some tools um just a basic tool set basic house tool set you know uh, I'm talking some pliers, you know, some electrical tape, some electric tape, <laughs> some electric cutters, you know, some wire cutters, what, whatever. Uh, just some basic things, a couple of butt connectors to, for electricals. But I mean, like, uh, you know, a socket, a small socket set, some mm -hmm. screwdrivers, you know, I mean, just one of every little normal household set, or you can just find a pre-made tool sets, things like that. Yeah. If we find some, maybe we'll put some links below. I work in the hardware business. So nails and hammers is my thing. Uh, so we have access to all of that stuff already. Um, so we just kind of hodgepodge our own, you know, we put it in a milk crate and off we go. Yeah. Uh, it, it goes in the, um, it goes in the box, our crawling closet. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, because my down, my, my underneath space is taken up by flashlights and in, in emergency stuff. Also Whoa. packs and flashlights. Oh, we got tons of those. If you need one, just stop by my campsite. We'll, we'll get you. I think we've got enough for the neighborhood in here. We have, we got you. We, You're covered. We got you. <laughs> we got you covered for sure. <laughs> right? And I think... Uh, Are we at the last one? I think the last one, um, and again, because of this issue, we, we do this a little bit more stringent, I think, than we normally start off to be, but... Do a safety check before you pull out of your driveway or your street or however wherever you're at or if you've got yours in storage and you're hooking it up wherever you're at make sure those lights work make sure there's no wires rubbing make sure your trailer is actually hooked up correctly i, I you know i mean if you need to know we can we'll, we might do a, a video on how to hook the trailer up let me know if you want to see something like that um especially with some of those weight uh, distribution hitches i mean they're they're different like ours are solid bars everybody else i know has chains they're ours, terrifying uh you know if you're if you're crooked at all or you're up on a slope i mean those things popping off will break your leg if they come off funny so you yeah. got to make sure you actually know how to get them off because if you take them off right i mean there's zero pressure they just come right off um that is also something we learned the hard way because wasn't it on a, it was that same trip that when we stopped the first time we noticed one of the stabilizer bars had actually we didn't click come, it in right it hadn't clicked in right so it had actually come loose luckily it wasn't like flapping around or anything but no, it was just sitting up against where it should have actually been in if there's a rookie move i think we've made it we've we've made it and yeah. we researched the bejesus out of everything i am a researcher and uh, I'll, I'll tell you if if i if i if it wasn't in a research note and there was a mistake to be made we made it. We made it. For sure. Yeah. It was, it was very And I'm an overthinker, so I think of every possible thing that could happen and could go wrong and try to plan for the best of it. And we have definitely, I mean, we've had our propane tank shear off. Oh. We yeah. had that happen. We had that happen on I-5. Yeah. Um, which we didn't realize until West we got Coast, home. Yeah. That the, yeah, was, um, the whole the holder the whole tray that holds the propane tanks on the tongue of your trailer is sheared off. And it was only being held on by the propane hose itself. How it yeah. stayed on, 
is still astonishing to me. That could have been a catastrophe. By the but, grace of God, for but sure. But do the safety checks. Walk around that trailer a couple of times. Make sure your 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 turn signals are work. Your brakes work. You know your brake lights work. Um, make sure you've actually removed the chocks. I mean, there's been there's been a time that we started pulling away and realized, like when we first got going, the, the stairs were still down. Uh, you know. We've unhooked the trailer and on our driveway, on our steep driveway, and realized, oh, we didn't chalk it before we started putting the stabilizer jacks down. That was a good day. Yeah, I think that was, um, I think I think, that was, that was the first or second time we'd ever put up in yeah. the driveway. Have we driven off without the door being locked? Because that is also a good tip. Lock your door. We've not done that. Before we've you go. we've seen we, it flopping in the wind. We also did leave our last campground without closing the vents on the trailer. Oh, roof vents. When you leave, put this on your checklist. Roof Close vents. the roof vents. We have done that twice. Yeah. We've had to stop and realize we didn't lower the vents back down. So and by just... stopping, he means we pulled over to the side of the road. I got out and started jumping to see if they were open or not. Correct. It's really entertaining, I'm sure. <laughs> I think I think that's our t our, our top ten. Uh, there's many I others think that we could go more through. More than ten in there. Uh, there might be. I think we may have lost count, but uh, these are the top ones that we can think of. Uh, if we think of others, maybe we'll do another video. If there's other questions or cons you know things that you got, put comments below. We can answer them. If you liked this video, if you thought it was entertaining or helpful or anything like that, give us a thumbs up. If you have something nice to say, put a comment below if you have anything to add. And don't forget to subscribe because we are trying to do a video every week. Failing at that, but we are doing But videos. we're trying. We're also on Instagram and Facebook, and I guess we have a Twitter. We have a Twitter. We don't really follow it right now. I don't know. That's not where to find us. No, it's not. Instagram is the place to find Instagram's us. Instagram is the place to find us. <laughs> but we'll put links for all of that in the notes, so. All right. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Have a happy weekend. Happy weekend.